I'm going to do a quick Bible study here about time. Time, T-I-M-E. Time is your most valuable asset in this world. But you don't know it. The reason I know that you don't know it is because you don't live like it. You live like you're going to... You live daily like you're going to live to be 10,000 years old. Like time is nothing to you. Like, look at all the time people waste every day. Look at all the thousands of hours you spend on the computer in your lifetime. And then... Several thousand more hours watching TV in your lifetime. Then you spend several thousand more hours in worry. You worry constantly. It's the number one thing today. People worry. They're always worrying about something. Jesus Christ said, why do you worry about tomorrow? Do not worry, says the Lord. See, the reason you worry is because you truly don't believe that God is in charge. Because you don't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. So you don't talk to God, you know, several times a day. You don't see the power of God in your life, and you don't see the power of God around you. So you don't see that God is in complete control of everything. So what you do is you try to go out and control everything. And by you, with your own hands, my friend, you're trying to control everything. And that only leads to worry because you are not God. You are an imperfect, sinful creature that looks at pornography. If you've ever looked at pornography on the internet, you've sinned. You're a sinner. If you've ever had sex outside of marriage, you're a sinner. If you've ever looked at another woman or man in lust, says the Bible, you are a sinner, and that sin is has caused you to fall short of the glory of God. And if that sin is not washed away, you will not spend eternity with God. And if you do not spend eternity with God, where will you be? You think you'll just be floating around on a cloud? No. You'll be in hell for all eternity. There is only heaven and there is hell. There is no purgatory. There's nothing else. There's heaven, there's earth, and there's hell. I'm not saying hell is in the earth. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's a heaven, there's a hell, and there's earth and mankind. And if your sins are not washed away, think about it. You know the story. This isn't the first time you've heard this story, obviously. Everybody in America has heard the Christian story thousands of times. And thousands of times, 50% of the population says, Ah, no, that's not for me. Maybe later. Yeah, one day. Or right before I die, I'll cry out to God and ask forgiveness. Time is your most valuable possession. So if you're average, you're going to live to be about 77 years old, and then you're going to die. Why does time exist? Because death exists. In heaven, time does not exist because death does not exist in heaven. On earth, time exists because of death exists. You're only going to live so long and you're going to die. So there's a schedule of time. Now, actually, time existed before the sin 
And before the punishment of death came into man's life in the Garden of Eden, God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. He made the sun and the moon. There was a full 24-hour day scale, just like today. Nothing God has made has been changed or removed. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is always the same. That's one of the greatest profound things about God. He's perfect. He, he never changes. Perfection cannot change. But you, if you're 20 years old, I suggest you get down and give your life to Christ and ask him what you're supposed to do with your time. If you're 30 years old, same thing. If you're 40, 50, 60 years old, you better have a really good plan what you're going to do with the last 20 years of your life. If you are 45 years old today, you have 30 years left to live according to the average person living in America. Oh, I know, I know, I know. You're way above average. <laughs> You're going to live to be 90. I got it. So what you're telling me is you're going to live to be 90 and you're going to work till you're 89 years old. That doesn't sound like a very good plan to me. We have destroyed God's concept of time for our lives in this world. Your boss at work, you applied at a job, now you have a boss. You probably have several bosses. They don't get along with each other. They don't get along with you. And every one of them wants a piece of your time. They're all arguing over you, the employee. Oh, what should we do with Bob or Susie today? To torture them for the rest of their life. <laughs> I know. It sounds funny, but it's not funny because it's true. What do you do with your time every day? Oh my gosh, I can make a 10-hour video about this. You get seven hours sleep a night, which is not enough. You get up and shower... You try to get something to eat, some frozen thing you throw in a microwave. You have no idea what it's like to eat your grandma's homemade breakfast anymore. You have no concept of the way those people used to live such great lives, simple lives, but great. You try to say goodbye to your kids, or maybe you take your kids to school and you rush off to work and your boss says you're two minutes late. You what? You're two minutes late. Actually, the way your time's going to be a miracle if you made it to work at all. You work all day, they give you a 10-minute break, then they give you a half-hour break. And I am amazed how many people get in their car at lunchtime with only 30 minutes and try to go to the drive through at McDonald's, eat their meal, Drive back to work as fast as you can. Punch back into work in 30 minutes. Then you get a 10-minute break. Then you got to go home. Can't go home. You got to go to the grocery store. Most people go to the grocery store five, six nights a week in America now. Well, first you got to stop off at the ATM. Then you find out your wife already took the money out of the ATM. Now you got to get on the phone two hours a day trying to figure out what's going on. Then you got to buy cake. You got to celebrate Valentine's Day, Memorial Day, five birthdays in your family, Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas, New Year's. <laughs> Memorial Day, 4th of July. Then you got to go on three picnics. Then you got to go on vacation for one or two weeks if you're lucky. You get the point. 
And after all that, you got to go home and watch TV three hours every single night with your family and sit there like a bump on a log, falling asleep in a chair with a beer in your hand. Then you got to go to the doctor for stress. And you got to get some medication to take care of your stress. So now you got to go stand in line in the pharmacy once every month. Now you got to go to the bank. Now you got to sit down and pay all your bills. Write them a check, send them a money order, have an automatic withdrawal out of your account. Then they withdraw the wrong amount. Now you got to get back on the phone and figure that out. And now you got to figure out why you can't lose weight. You would think you'd lose weight with all this running around. You burn like 3,000 calories a day. You barely eat anything, and now you can't lose weight. So let me cut to the chase here. One day in your 70s, you're going to go to the doctor and find out you're dying. Maybe your 80s. I mean, does it really matter? The only thing you'll be thinking when you're lying on that hospital bed is how much time was wasted in your life. Because you're the only one that can change it. You're the only one in your life that has the power to say yes or no to certain things. You don't have to watch TV. You don't have to smoke cigarettes. You don't have to buy a $60,000 truck just to drive to a job you hate in a grocery store that's got sells crap. You don't have to do any of that. you got the power to say, no, I'm not going to buy a car over $10,000. You got the power to say, I'm not going to work over 40 hours a week. I'm going to save 20, 30% of my income. I'm not going to charge those credit cards. You're the only one. The last days of your life are going to be spent. And that's when a man or a woman realizes time was your most valuable thing and you never knew it. And now your life's about to end. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You have no idea what's going to happen when you die. You're scared to death, but mostly you wish you could live your life over again. There's only one solution, my friend. There's only one solution. Find Jesus and then he will tell you what to do with your time, and then you will always be happy and satisfied every day. When you're doing the worldly system, you're not going to be happy in this system. It's a broken system. Now it's been broke for about 30, 40 years. It demands too much and pays too little. But you find Jesus Christ, and you will find daily joy for the rest of your days, no matter how long they are.